Hello, Internet, and welcome to Buddy Reads, where I, Elliot the Purple Air Doofus, read a small section of a book and review it for you. Today, we are beginning our journey into Wizard and Glass by Stephen King. This is the fourth book in the Dark Tower saga, so if you haven't read books one through three, which are The Gunslinger, The Drawing of the Three, and The Wastelands, I suggest you do that before diving into this book. This book, much like The Wastelands and The Drawing of the Three, begins with what is called an argument, which is a review of the previous books. And it talks about Roland and his desire for the Dark Tower. And it talks about his gathering of Susanna and Eddie and Jake and their adventure to the Wastelands and how they get onto a train named Blaine. And at the end of the book, Blaine says, I plan to kill myself and now I'm going to kill you too because you're on me while I'm planning to kill myself. And that's pretty much where the three books are right now. Surely there's some that I've missed. It's just that's all you need to know for this video in particular. Then we have the prologue, which is basically a republishing almost of the last 10 pages of the Wastelands. It's as if you just watch the last few minutes of an episode before you watch the new one. Really catch yourself up on what's going on. Then we start getting into the story called Riddles. And it's aptly named because this is all about Roland trying to come up with a riddle to stump Blaine. So that Blaine has to let them off the train before Blaine blows up. At the beginning of the story, it takes place in the surrounding areas of Blaine's train tracks. You get to see the dis the wake of destruction that Blaine is leaving behind since he is moving at such incredible speeds that it is destroying buildings and destroying live creatures as he just speeds along without a care in the world. Our heroes are on the train and they're trying to figure out a way to come up with a riddle that stumps Blaine so that they win and they get let off safely. And Roland devises a plan. He says, I want us all to tell Blaine riddles of varying difficulty so that way I can understand how he thinks. He assigns a difficulty. It's like, I believe it was Susanna gets the easy one, Roland gets the eh one, Jake gets the hard one, and Eddie is given the incredibly difficult one. He tells Eddie not to tell one of his jokes, just to use the riddle from the book that Jake had brought, which was a book of riddles with the answer torn out the back. They all go up and they all tell their riddles, and when Blaine answers, he does so almost rapid fire light. They ask a question and he's like, that's an easy one, it's this. They ask a question again, he says, it's this. They ask a question again, and he's like, it's this. And there's barely any hesitation at all to any of the questions. Roland can't really grasp at how he's answering these riddles, partially because Blaine is a computer and doesn't really show hesitation. We have a section that's just pretty much a rapid fire where Roland gives a riddle and Blaine just blatantly gives the answer. And it's just like back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Then Jake realizes that his hand no longer hurts and his hand should be hurting because they had just gone through this situation where Jake was hanging from a hole in a bridge and their dog Oi had to bite into his hand to be swung to safety. And he asks Roland why his hand doesn't hurt. And Blaine says, oh, I did that. I'm a luxury train car and when you sat down in my chair my armrest was able to fix your hand for you and help you to feel better. I can do so many other things as well. I can give you your first sexual fantasy and he starts listing off these women. One of the women is a fictional character and so Jake laughs at it. Blaine didn't like being laughed at and that's when Susanna and Roland realize that Blaine made a mistake and they're trying to figure out a way in order to exploit that mistake. Well, not that mis specific mistake, but figure out if they can make him make more. Blaine says, I have to recharge my batteries, so we are going to stop at this stop. And while I'm recharging my batteries, I want you to see something. And so he drops the walls again, and everyone is shown this beautiful forest with a roaring waterfall. And it's roaring because Blaine has decided to play the sound inside of the train car at 100% audio. And so everyone is covering their ears and in pain, and that's when they realize that they are being punished because... 
Blaine made a mistake and they laughed at that mistake. Blaine says, I have to prepare to move. That'll take about an hour. While I'm preparing to move, why don't you riddle me some more? And so Roland does. I believe it was Jake looked at the map and realized that it was taking them much faster to get to their destination than originally thought. They thought it was going to be like eight hours and only like two hours have passed and they're almost there. Blaine just tosses it up to time being different in Roland's world and I'm just kind of more irritated. I was a little disappointed that it took them so quickly to do this part though because I was hoping that they were going to be on the train the entire time since I know that this book is supposed to be about Roland's backstory. So my hope was that they would just be on the train, that would be their journey while Roland told them stories of his youth. But I was wrong. Then we start getting into a character that had kind of been ignored up until this point, even though he was with them the entire time, and that is Eddie. We start getting into Eddie's past and about how he used to hang out with his older brother Henry and all of Henry's friends, and they would ask, who would you want to be in a fight with you? And Henry shocked everyone by saying that he would want Eddie to be with him because Eddie is scrappy and Eddie won't back down from a fight and Eddie could convince the devil to burn himself alive if he really wanted to. Eddie is remembering all of this because no one is paying attention to him. He's kind of zoning out. He's slowly coming out of it at this point. Roland has kind of used up all of the riddles that he can think of in his head that he thought might work against Blaine. And so he calls up Jake to read the last 10 riddles of the riddle book that he has because those are supposed to be the most difficult 10 riddles. And Jake asks them, Blaine characteristically just kind of Raptor fires the answers back, and Jake asks the riddle from the Bible, and of course, Blaine knows the answer to that. Everyone is really despondent, and no one thinks to look at Eddie for the answer. Eddie kind of starts laughing to himself, because he realizes the riddles that he needs to ask, and he realizes what kind of questions really piss off Blaine. Eddie kind of exploits that. Eddie realizes that Blaine hates the same kinds of riddles that Roland hates. The ones that are more jokey and less logical. Eddie stands up and he starts rapid firing these jokes at Blaine and Roland figures out what Eddie is doing and Roland figures out that it's working. Roland actually stands up and he says, Blaine, if you refuse to answer the questions, we 